Okay, in this video we're going to be talking about the uh, Festo SMS series axis. Uh, SMS stands for Simplified Motion Series. And we're going to discuss what to do when you have a failure of your motor with the IL link on it. Um, so we're going to be replacing the motor with a spare part motor and installing it on the axis that has failed. If we go to the website, um, in the example here, I have a ELGS ball screw and at some point in time this motor here is going to fail. And we're going to start to show you what is required to replace that motor. So if we go to the spare parts, you'll notice that this particular option right here, you have two options here, one and two. One, you can buy integrated drive, or two, you can buy a unparameterized motor. The unparameterized motor comes in two sizes, the 42 and the 50 series, I think it's 52. And the idea is that this motor can be used on a variety of SMS, so that's really more convenient for you know, the tool crib and so on and so forth. So uh, we go back to this and you'll see that the repair note here, um, you can download a, a document. The document, when you click on the document here, you'll see here that it's not parameterized and you need to have a compatible iLink master to update the spare part motor with the replacement parameters that you want it to use. So let's close this and we'll close this and now we're back to here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to download um, an iLink IODD file for this particular device because this is the device that you're using. Um, and I can point out here that uh, this is the whole series of SMS and um, there are two units in the series, the EPCE and the ERMS, that are not compatible with spare part uh, unparameterized motor replacement. And that's because they have some very complex mechanical uh, components inside that need to be uh, set up properly when disassembling and reassembling the device. It's about as simple as it gets. Um, but the, the idea here is that we're going to download from the website the, the IODD file so that we can recognize the existing device. We're going to download the parameter files um, so that we can um, set up the spare part unparameterized motor for whatever one of these devices is that you have on the manufacturing floor that is going to fail. And finally, the firmware, if you don't have a, a latest firmware in the, in, the, in the motor, it's important to update the firmware as well. So download the IODD file. This one here is 127. You will hit the download button. If you need firmware, download the button or hit the hit the download button here and the parameter file. Um, again, hit the download button. For example, if I download the parameter files for this, it's gonna download the ELGS BS parameter files. And when I unzip the parameter files for the LGS, it comes in this zip file right here. And if you unzip it, what you need to do, you have axial or parallel. And within this, you have the variety of IODD files or the parameter files that you're going to use to download. So you're going to find your axis, and this is going to be the parameter file you're going to use. So let's go back to the website. Additionally, on the website, so we've typed in ELGS to get the part that we're going to replace. Now we want to deal with the EMCS. So if you just type in EMCS on the support downloads area, you'll notice here that you have the IOLink IODD file, which you're going to need initially. You're going to download this, and you're going to download the firmware package if, again, you need it. 
And here are the parameter files yet again. So at this point, you have downloaded all the files. And in my case here, I have three little sections here. So I have the IODD files, which are my ELGS ball screw. And I've, I just have the IODD file here. And I have the EMCS ST, which again, IODD files. Then I have the, the one ELGS ball screw that matches my axis. That's my parameter file. And then I have the firmware, which we're not gonna do, but that's, that's the firmware that you would use, okay? So we're ready to start the procedure. Okay, so what we've done so far is we've downloaded all of the files for the unit that is being replaced We've downloaded the IOLink IDD file for the spare part motor. And the next step is to uh, determine the, the, the master IOLink device that you're using. So in my case, I'm using the CDSU-1 from Festo. And in order to use that to update the device, we need to download the software. So you click on the software section here, and you're gonna download this. Once you've installed it, then we're gonna move into the next step the, the first step after starting up is we want to connect to a device. And right now I have connected the real hardware here. Okay, this right here is connected. You can see the LED on down here in the corner. And we're using this, uh, this device here. This is the one that's going to be replaced. Okay, so if we connect to the IOLink master, We'll see here that uh, when we actually do get connected here on port six, uh, that we have no IDD files corresponding to vendor 333 and so on and so forth. So at this point here, what we need to do is take the IODD files that we downloaded from the website and add them to our local search pass. So if we come over here and do add, We simply need to find the files, where we put them. And in my case, I have them right here. So I have the spare part motor here. I'm just gonna select the folder. So now that I've selected the folder, both those devices have been added. And now when we're online, it has an association with the IOLink IDD file. Don't need this set up anymore. And we're online. And the first step is important to have an understanding about what the parameterized uh, end position out value is here, okay? Because when you go to replace the device, if you are in fact using uh, data storage, then your spare part device has to have a value larger than this value right here. So right now, just write down the value to be used later. Okay, so now I'm going to disconnect that device. I'm going to go offline here. And I'm going to connect to the spare part motor now, just like in this picture. I'm going to connect directly to this motor here. So I'm going to turn supply power on, which I just did, and then I'll turn on the, the IOLink. So I'm plugging, connecting the IOLink right now. You'll see here we have the flashing LEDs. And we can hear the motor is active right now and enabled. <clears throat> so we have a full connection right now. And back in the software here, if we connect, we'll see here that we're not connected to ELGS ball screw like what we were just connected, but we're connected to the EMCS ST. It's because we have not parameterized the motor yet, which is our step right now. Okay, in order to parameterize that motor, we have to have downloaded the parameter file, of course, and in order to update parameters, we use the firmware, uh, firmware update control panel here. So at this point, we have to find our file. Either you use control plus U to open up the file location, or you can drag and drop the file here. In my case, I'm going to drag and drop. I'm just going to minimize this a little bit here. And I'm going to drop it in. Minimize this again. So this is the file that we're going to use right here. 
and at this point it's very simple you press the update button so it's going to have a progress bar here it says don't disconnect the USB or turn off anything while you're doing this so right now it's downloading a new parameter file for the ELGS so it's going to turn this EMCS ST motor hopefully into an ELGS ball screw And at this point, it says firmware is successful. And now the device is still trying to connect. I'll just show you the, the files right here. So we're in red mode. And see how we're connected. We're, because we're still connected to the same IOLink master, it doesn't think it's an EMCS anymore. Okay? So right now it's, it's thinking it's something else. And we have this red parameter file. This is part of the procedure, not to be alarmed. Uh, at this point here, you need to go to the specialist role here. And we need to click on the store parameters. So this right here, this feature, so we're gonna click on store parameters. At this point, we are going to cycle logic voltage. So see the LED goes off, we're going to lose the connection, and we're going to connect the IOLINK master again to the spare part motor, which is now an ELGS ball screw. This error here will go away, and now it's asking us to be referenced. So at this point, everything is progressing the way we had hoped, and now is the next question. So at this point, we can home it. Um, but earlier I told you when we were connected to the original device to write down the value. In my case, it was 104.24, so 104.24 millimeters. So if we're using data storage on our original device, when we finish homing right now, these values here need to be larger than 124 or 104.24 on the device that's being replaced. If not, and data storage is active up here, then you will have an error that will have to be cleared by disabling the data storage. If you're not using data storage at all, then we can simply reference the drive here and the motor will be ready to be used as a spare part. In this case here, I'm going to home the axis and I'm going to make sure that this value here is larger than 104.24. So I'm going to execute the, the reference right now and the shaft is turning here. Typically at this point, you would already be connected to the actual axis, so it should home. And um, right now it's homing. In my case, I have to stop it because it's not connected to anything, so it's not gonna bottom on anything. So I'm gonna grab a pair of pliers here. Now it's turning in the opposite direction now. Up here you get the status that you're running and now I'll think it stops at the very end point now. So now everything's stopped, it has been referenced. And let's reload the values here. And now we'll see here that it's a value of 141.80. <coughs> <coughs> and we have a speed in and out of 10%. So 10% and 141.80. And now this particular device is ready to be used as a spare part replacement. And I'm gonna do that in the next step. Okay, now we have a situation where our motor has been damaged or failed and we need to disassemble this using the instructions of course on the website from Festo and then we are, are going to install our parameterized motor which was formerly the EMCS YYST42 in this case and we have parameterized it already as an ELGS ball screw which is the same as this axis right here okay so 
we're going to theorize about the fact that we've just replaced the motor at this point. And um, if you were not using data storage, then your, your job's finished. You'll end up being prompted to home the axis and you'll continue from there and you, you'll have no problems. In this particular video here, I'm going to show you that um, I'm going to show you what's happening when you have backup storage active. So before the failure of the device, you're going to set up data storage. So I'm just going to show this real quick. In this case here, I have 100, 100, 100, 104, 204 for all these values here. If I want to talk about the parameterized or the parameters that are in the device here, these are the data storage parameters that are implemented in the device that will be replaced. So we've got speed in and out force and start process start press and position out intermediate position so basically these values right here are the most important ones okay and in order to make data storage active if you turn backup storage on this at this point here like it says in the text anything you've changed here will be updated and then i'm going to activate restore only so at this point here, the line's been running for a year and we have a failure and the restore only is active in the iLink master. So the device goes down and we disconnect the device. Okay. Now let's see if I can get this a little bit multiple on the page here. Get this up and running here. So we're gonna make like this device here is actually connected to right here, okay? So this is installed on the LGS itself and the, supply power is active and we're just about to connect the IOLink power which is connected to the IOLink master here. And We are now connecting it right now. So at this point, the iLink master will start a connection. And once the connection is done, then it will overwrite the values on this device right here with the new values. So now we see here that we're not referenced, but the value which used to be 10% when we did the spare part update is now 100. And these values here, when we did the spare part replacement were 140, 180, and now they're the values that were in the master at the time that the restore only was activated. So this is a complete full spectrum of the spare part replacement. What I would like to point out is this one little thing right here. Very, very important is what I had mentioned a couple times through this video is that when you've taken the spare part motor and you're doing a reference run, if the value of these right here are smaller than what is in the IOLink master, what you will encounter is uh, when you have data storage active on the device being replaced, um, you'll have a situation where the values that are in the IOLink master, which are the 10424, will not be pushed to the device. These, these will be discarded and you'll be encountering a data storage error just like is shown here. And the device will be in a situation where it's a little confused. And the only way to get around this error is to actually disable the data storage on that new Sparper replacement. If you don't want to disable the data storage, then you need to take that original spare part motor, do a reference run for it and make the value larger than what is in the IOLink master if you do know that at the time, okay? And that's my last hint and I hope this video has helped you.